All right, so yesterday we had looked at this graph here. Oh, why is it echoing? It's not echoing anymore. Okay. okay. So it says that the solution of x values for which the graph is released, so we already graphed this, right? We already found where our roots were and we had decided that we were going to shade between our two rights, our two roots. So we said that our root was at negative four. We said our root was at positive two. And we had determined that these roots were open circles because the graph was less than but not equal to and then our graph was open up, and our vertex was at negative 1. So again, our graph was sort of open up and looked roughly like this. And we had determined that if you test point at 0, 0, that worked. So what I want to do on the next screen with you is test point three different test points. So we know our roots at negative four and two. So we're going to test point values less than negative four, values between negative four and two, and values greater than two. So we can see exactly why it doesn't work for where it doesn't work and why it works where it does work. So we can check our solution by picking a point less than, greater than, and in between. So these are case checkpoints. So a number less than negative 4 would be like checking negative 5. A number between them, we picked 0 yesterday, so let's pick 1 today. And a number greater than... Um, so a number greater than 2 is 3. So what I want you to do is take negative 5, positive 1, and 3, and um, plug each of those in to our original function. So that's negative 5 squared plus 2 times negative 5 minus 8. And we want to know if that is less than 0. So negative 5 squared is positive 25. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 minus 8. And we need that value to let be less than 0. So 25 minus 18 is 7. 7 is not less than 0 since that test point is false or the value at x equals negative 5 is positive, that doesn't meet the requirement that the, app, that the quadratic function has to be negative. So therefore, negative 5 and less do not work. Plugging in negative or positive 1 or 0 or any other number between negative 4 and 2, we get 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 8. So you have 1 plus 2 minus 8. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 minus 8 has to be less than 0. So you have negative 5 less than 0. Is negative 5 less than 0? Yes. So what that means is values between negative 4 
and two will be true. And then again, just to confirm, you could check three. So you have three squared plus two times three minus eight, because there are times where it could be positive on other intervals if this were a polynomial. So we have three squared, which is nine, nine times nine plus two times three is six minus eight. So nine plus six is 15, 15 minus eight is seven again. Seven is not less than zero. Therefore, that side is also false. So again, we can confirm kind of plugging in algebraically what we confirmed yesterday graphically. So let's look at another graph. So again, this graph is different than the graphs yesterday and what you did on your homework because on your homework you had y values, which meant you shaded the entire region inside. Now we're like saying that y is equal to zero, which means we can only shade on the number line where y is equal to zero, which is the x-axis. So once again, what you want to do is kind of factor your quadratic. So factors of 6 that sum to 5. So that would be a um, positive 6 and a negative 1. So then what that means is my roots of this quadratic are at negative 6 and positive 1. So you get open circles on your graph because once again this is greater than but not equal to. And we can kind of quickly get our quadratic from that point. We know it's open up. My h value of my vertex would be negative b divided by 2. So it's going to be symmetric at negative 2.5. My k value is going to come from plugging negative 2.5 in. So plugging that value in, 2.5 squared is 6.25. It's positive because anything negative squared is positive. Then you're subtracting from that 5 times 2.5 and you're subtracting from that 6. So that means that my k value is at negative 12.25. So that means that this graph is symmetric somewhere way down here. We know it is a y-intercept at negative 6, which means it's also at negative 5, negative 6, because it's 1 to the right of the root on both sides. So my graph would look something like this. Now it doesn't matter if you make this graph solid or dashed because the graph itself is not part of the solution region. It's either everything beyond it or everything in it. So our solution is actually coming from our number line. So you would want to know, okay, are the values to the left or right? or in the middle of negative six positive. So what we want is our values to be greater than zero this time. So we're looking for plugging in a number and getting a positive. So if you plugged in something between negative six and one, so I always pick zero if I can. Zero squared plus five times zero minus six is negative six. Negative six is in fact less than zero, so that is true. So once again, you are going to shade between the two test points. You could check if you wanted by plugging a number greater than one or less than negative six in. So you could plug in two, two squared is four, 
4 minus 6 gave you negative 2, but negative 2 plus 10 gave you positive 8, and 8 is not less than 0, therefore making that false and not working. So again, you can just check and see all around whether they are true or false and determine where your solutions or regions come from. Okay, and then that leaves case two. So this graph is a little bit different. We have a uh, A value. Now my graph is greater than or equal to and factors of negative 10 that sum to 4 do not exist. So this is why we learn this after quadratic formula and completing the square. In order to get the solution, we need to use the quadratic formula. To find the roots of my graph, So that's your negative p plus or minus the square root of p squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The value under your radical, a.k.a. your discriminant, is not going to be a perfect square or it would have been factorable. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. So the two negatives make it positive. So we get the square root of 56. And then we have to get those approximated roots from my calculator. So on my calculator, I'm going to take negative 4 plus the square root of 56 and divide that value by 4. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take negative 4 minus the square root of 56 and divide that by 4. So you should get 0.87 and negative 0.287. As roots, these would be closed circles now because it's greater than or equal to. Once again, my graph is open up. My y-intercept is at negative 5. I know I have a point at negative 5, and my vertex is somewhere between like negative 1-ish, so it's at so you have negative 9 plus 2, so negative 7. And again, we want to know, is my graph shaded in or out? So in order to determine if it's shaded in or out, we are going to uh, test point on our number line. So you would take negative 2.87, 0 0.87, and I pick a number between them, so maybe 0. So if you plug 0 in, you get 0 plus 0 minus 5. So you get negative 5 is greater than or equal to 0, which is not true. You could test point 1. 
So 2 plus 6, or 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 minus 5 is 1, 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So that means it's every value greater than or equal to 0.87. And then you could also check negative 3. So 2 times 9 plus 4 times negative 3 minus 5. So you get 18 minus 12 minus 5, which is 1, which is also greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, it is also all values less than or equal to negative 2.87. So your solution is what I have graphed up there in red or written as an inequality. My solution is negative infinity to negative 2.87, including that 2.87, and then including... 0.87 to positive infinity. So just being able to write it as a solution set, whether you write it as an interval or an inequality. So your homework is to just finish those graphs on the very next page. So for Monday, you're uploading for me all 12 graphs. So there were six from last night and six for tonight. And then on Monday, we're going to come in and do the rest of this algebraically.